I always love the questions and answers because it gives me a chance to go back and answer things on videos that are a lot of fun. Today we're going to talk about homesteading and how I actually got surprised on that one when I called the tax collector. And somebody asked about all my jobs that I've had. I never really thought about it, but seven days on your warranty and a bunch more. Let's get started on questions and answers. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I'm Rusty Nelson, and welcome to my channel. I guess it's about the villages, retirement, and things that I've actually learned about when I was moving to the villages, buying a house, and now that I'm down here in the villages, kind of things I'm learning about retirement and my life in the villages. And so when you guys send in comments and questions, they go to me first, and I look at them because some of them you know, there's trolls out there and they put stupid things in there. So be advised also when you do write things in there, unless you put your email in there and you mean it personal or you say personally to me, I can't respond to you. So if you write something, for instance, I got one recently that was just so off the wall, it was ridiculous. And I really wanted to respond to the person, but I couldn't because I have no idea who they are. And to respond to it, I would have had to say negative things about somebody, and I'm just not going to do that. So anyway, realize that that's going on also. But also, sometimes I'll hold them sometimes for you know a month or so just because I either have to do some research or they don't fit in that time, but I still want to answer them on here. So there's a bunch of stuff that, that's involved in it. But I do see everyone, and thank you so much for subscribing. I know there's been a couple of questions about not getting notified. So if you subscribe, let me explain really quickly what happens is you hit the bell and it comes up and it says subscribe. But on there, you got to click the bell again and hit all. So then what happens is you don't get like big notifications and emails and texts and all that kind of crazy stuff. Basically, what happen is next, happens is next time you turn on YouTube, they actually make sure that they put those up or they try to put them up, however that algorithm works. But basically, that's about it. So anyway, thanks a lot for subscribing and ringing that bell and giving a thumbs up. It really helps the channel out a lot. Anyway, a uh, bunch of uh, fun ones this time. And there's one question that turned out to be four or five, and I just decided I'm going to ramble through it. Another one about jobs and stuff like that. But also realize that this will be divided up into chapters down below so you can skip ahead anytime or back or do whatever you want. Anyway, let's go ahead and just jump right in with the first question. Here's the question, and then I'm going to explain a little bit. First of all, let me say there's a video that I did that, that I think is pretty comprehensive. And if you don't understand taxes and how the CDD is and why the CDD type of government is, how to look up your taxes, that type of thing, this is a great video to watch. Grab a cup of coffee, and I'll put the link up above and down below. But let me read this question really quick. TW writes, Hi, Rusty. Did you become a homesteader in Florida? If so, did you keep your property in Pennsylvania? Now, I'm not going to go through the homes, whole homesteading thing because there is a video in there. I will put the link to it, but all you have to do is search on my channel, Homestead, and that video will come up. Yes, I did homestead, and I learned, I learned something that's pretty important. I became a Florida resident the first of this year, 2023, and you cannot homestead until you are an actual resident. But here's the thing. You can't just all of a sudden do it in the middle of the year. I believe it's March is the beginning of March is the last day that you can actually do it for that for that next year's taxes, actually. And so what I did is January 1st, I went in and or just after that, I did that. I homesteaded and they said, OK, and all the documents and everything else said that I declared that I was living in Florida full time. And this was my primary residence. Good. And I'm thinking, oh, this is great. My 3%, I'll be held on my taxes because I knew there was going to be a big jump in the appraisal value, blah, 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 blah. Well, I got what's called a trim notice for next year. And basically what that is, it's a, a notice 
from an album in Sumter County. So Sumter County sends in a notice and they say, this is what your taxes were last year. This is what they this is what we think they're going to be when we meet and decide. And it gives you kind of a heads up. Well I said, well, that kind of stinks because my property taxes went up way more than three percent. And I thought, darn. So I called them right up. They were extremely nice and extremely helpful. And they explained to me that when, even though I homesteaded like the first couple of days of January, it does not take effect until the next year. So <clears throat> from now on, in past 2024, my taxes will be held at that 3%, 2024 and, and on. But for 2023, even though I did it in January, they're still, they take the appraised value. That's fine. That's the way it works. But just so you know, yes, I did homestead. And I still have my apartment up in Pennsylvania. I don't have any property up there, but I have, a, have an apartment. But And the reason I did the tax thing and the homesteading and everything else January 1st is it just made a clean cut from Pennsylvania and I, you know, I did a whole video on that. I'll try to put all those links down below so that you can reference them. And especially, you, you really need to pay attention to that stuff because you can get trapped just the way I did. Not trapped, but you know, you know what I mean. You just—it's a timing thing. Anyway, I hope that answers your question. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. And on to the next one. I'm just going to jump right on this question right away. Jose writes: Rusty, is car washing part of the water restrictions per your understanding? I take care of my cars and I wash them weekly. This would deter me from living there if I was restricted from keeping my cars in mint condition. Well, good news for you, Jose. I don't know of any restrictions. I want to explain why and how the watering system works here in the villages. First of all, in District 13, where we are now, with that said, understand there's 15, I don't know, maybe 17 now districts. I, I have no idea, but it's growing constantly. Each one of those districts has its own governance, so to speak, their own restrictions. So some things may work in one area, some things may work different. But in 13 and for most of most of the villages, actually, this is kind of the way it works. There's a big governing, which is the water. Here, let me put the screen up here, and I'll show you the website. This is Southwest Florida Water Management District site. And if you kind of take a look at it in this map right here, I'll kind of punch this up really quick. This is the area it covers. And here I am right here in Sumter County. Now, with that said, Here's Marion County, which is a little different, and Lake's over here, so part of the villages is in here also. So there's there's different restrictions, so I'm just going to go over for Sumter right here. But if you read this, it says, Lawn Irrigation in Southwest Florida Water Management District is restricted to twice a week. However, some local cities and counties have special schedules and restriction one day per week measures in place. Violators could result in a citation, blah, 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 and everything else. So let's, that, that's for the district watering, um, Southwest Florida Management, which covers just like the map. And you guys can, I'll put the link down below, but you can read more than that. Now, as far as the village is concerned, in District 13, inside the cabinet in the garage, there where, where the sprinkler timer is, depending on what type you have, whether it's a rainbird or whatever. There is this image or the sticker that's in there. Let me show it to you. Now, this sticker is house specific. So even though it's in a unit or a district, these days will change so that everybody on your street is not watering at exactly the same time. So this basically follows along with the other website, except it restricts it to certain days so that you don't have all of, yeah, everybody's got a water on the same day. With that said, if we go back to the website and we read, let's see, right about here in the middle, fountains, car washing, and pressure washing. There are no specific restrictions on fountains, car washes, or pressure washing. These and other water uses should be conducted as efficiently as possible. So. There you go, Jose. That's 
that's about it. And so you can wash your car. Now, if there's any other restrictions that uh, haven't been implemented, I haven't read about them, and I don't know about any other districts besides 13. If anybody knows of any, go ahead and put them in the uh, comments. Sure, appreciate it, and so would Jose. Anyway, thanks a lot. I hope that answers your question, Jose. Let's jump on to another question real quick. This is, this is a fun one in, in many respects, in good and bad. But here, here's the question. Are Halloween decorations considered tchotchke? Uh, if you haven't seen my other videos, I talk about all the things that are illegally put into people's front yards as tchotchke or the giant Oscar Meyer Wiener truck. We've seen 12-foot-tall skeletons on Texas lawns. Yeah, you know... I love doing Christmas decorations, and I've done Halloween decorations. I just haven't done them around here because a lot of times I'm gone for the holidays. But I'm going to show you just the clip here for one second of what my garage looked like up in, uh, in w when I lived in Northern California. And I'll also put a link to it because it is on another channel, and you guys can check it out. I can't show it on here because it's got a lot of copyrighted information, but check this out just for one second. This was my garage with my animated Santa Claus. But boy, I sure have a hard time making it down the chimney. Ho, ho, ho! By the way, don't forget to leave cookies and milk out for me. Have a holly jolly Christmas. It's the best time of the year. That, that was definitely a fun part of my life with that. And if you want to watch that video, there's, there are Christmas decorations. You're not going to believe it. I think we had 175 homes. That was my garage. There's still a whole storefront that goes on that, but the whole rest of the house, and you'll get to see me back in the 90s or so, and don't make fun of it. But uh, like I said, there's uh, copyrighted music to it and everything else. So uh, remember that it's a very old video. But a lot of fun. But anyway, back to the lawn ornament thing. As many of you know, I'm not real fond of people putting lawn ornaments out there because when we moved into the neighborhoods, everybody agreed to the same thing that they weren't going to do it. And here's a picture, for example. Once one person puts one out and is allowed to do it, then you end up with something like this. Now, this is a house that I saw when I was out with a friend looking at open houses. And uh, we actually talked to one of the real estate agents uh, right there, and they said it actually... They rolled their eyes in the back of their head and they said, yeah, this actually devalues this home when they're trying to sell it. So I'm not sure what the story is with this house. I'm not picking on this house, but uh, this is the way it gets carried away. And these uh, tchotchkes, so to speak, are even lit up at night. But anyway, back to the seriousness of it, Halloween decorations and everything. Each district is different, but most of the districts, except for the ones way up north, most of the districts are basically the same and this is section 24 out of district 13, and it says, period, lawn ornaments are prohibited. There's no expansion on that for section 24. That's just the way it is, except for seasonal displays not exceeding 30-day duration. Now, with that said, I guess you can do pretty much whatever you want for 30 days and then they have to be taken down. But hopefully that answers your question and a little more. And let's bounce on to the next one. Here we go. Um, I'll just read this right now. Uh, Susan wrote in, Last I heard, you only have seven days after closing to report cosmetic items. Therefore, you may want to have an inspection with the within the first few days. At a minimum, have someone with an eye for detail or have somebody with an eye for detail look over the house for cosmetic problems. For, first of all, before I, I go on with this, this came from a video that I'm doing with Ray and Ashley, who bought a new home over in the Enclave, uh, which is kind of a really cool area. Got some really cool homes that are going to be built over there. And they actually invited me along with them. Ray was a friend of mine, or still is a friend of mine, and to go along in the build of their house. So we went over and we looked at the lot. I talked with him and said hello to Ashley on there. And we're going to kind of follow them all the way through this process as it goes on. So if you haven't taken a look at that, I'll put the link to that one down below too and check it out. But I also want to say thank you very much because Ray has been a real trooper on there and he's jumped back into the comments and questions. And when stuff comes up that he can answer, he's go ahead and answered 
the questions on there. So that was really nice of him to say thank you. When if you ask a question or whatever, and let him know you appreciate his his time and effort because it does take that. Now, with that said, what Susan's talking about, and I did a home inspection video where I actually videotaped the people coming in and doing my home inspection. So the way that works for people that don't know it is the the big marks are, and and she is right, about seven days, and then you have your yearly inspection. So let me explain this really quick. You have seven days after you move in to actually go through and find, as she put it, cosmetic things. You can find everything else you can put on there too, but the idea is that if there's like a scratch in the countertop or a window's broken or paint's chipping off, things that you could actually damage in the, yourself within the first seven days, they want to know about those things in the first seven days. And they figure these kind of small cosmetic things you can actually have repaired. And they really mean cosmetic things like scratches in countertops, scratches in windows, um, dented refrigerator doors, that type of thing. And you need to report those. That seven days is pretty strict. I, I, I'll tell you because um, I did mine and it was, I think it was very little after that. And I got a comment, but luckily because I wasn't in town, the builder said, yeah, okay, you, you know, you, you have slightly more than seven days because you weren't there. And that's basically it. But yes, that's a big thing. Go ahead and watch that video on the inspection. And D'Angelo did my inspection. There's a lot of good inspectors out there. If you don't feel comfortable, it might be worth scheduling a pre-inspection. But the reason that people, or that I feel that people don't have an inspection right away when you move in is you basically have that year to work out all of the things that were wrong with your house. Now, there's still like the 10-year builder's warranty and that type of stuff, whatever, you know, if you, your foundation cracks in half, whatever. But basically, you have a year to have them come in. And the, and the reason they do that, that at the end of that year, is because all the things that are probably going to go wrong or have gone wrong, you have the inspector come in and do all that and correct them. And I'll, I'll tell you what, I if you look at that, you'll see all the things that I had go wrong with my house and how they were taken care of. I have zero complaints about the warranty part. And I know there's other people out there that have problems and that type of stuff. I, I totally sympathize with you. I'm just telling you about my experience was pretty much perfect. So that's why people wait for a year because they know the builder is going to be here. They're not going away and they hold up to their warranty. But if you feel more comfortable getting an inspection done in that first seven days, you better schedule it out way ahead of time because these inspectors, they're really busy. They, they, they're, they're pretty well booked, but you can give them a try. Anyway, I hope that helps you out. Thank you so much for that uh, note there, Susan. Really appreciate it, and I'm sure that'll help some other people out. Let's get to another one real quick. I'll tell you what, I, I really had to think about this, whether to put this one on, but it, it kind of covers some subtle things that, that, that I believe in. And it, it looks long when you first see it, so I'll try to expand it after I read the first part of it. But right after this, I'm going to do the jobs thing. A few people keep asking about all the jobs that I've had in my life, um, and, and I'll cover that. I'm saving that to last, so if you don't want to watch it, you don't have to. But I, I, I got a kick out of going back and actually looking and figuring it out. But anyway, here, here you go. Um, I guess this is Ben. I did a lifestyle visit in May. Spent every evening at Brownwood listening to music, which seemed to be different every night. Yes, that is uh, that is true. First thing I noticed was all the old people. <laughs> Until it occurred to me that many are my age, middle 60s, dancing. I guess I'm one of those people that doesn't recognize their own age until they look in the mirror and go, eek! Yeah, I, 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 I haven't done a video yet, and people keep asking me about the things that I don't like about the villages, because a lot of it is psychological for me. It's not physical, you, you know, like, I'm, I'm mad about traffic or something like that. It's just not. It, it doesn't, I, well, maybe I'll do one of those videos, I don't know. But it really was a, a shock for me, the age, and it's not the age of the people, the age of myself. 
but it definitely takes, especially being single, a little getting used to that when you go out, you see all these people your age. So in other words, up in Philadelphia, for me to go to a bar someplace, uh, you go in and you're the 60-some-year-old and everybody's in their 20s, 30s, and you're lucky if you see somebody in their 40s. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. You go out on the pickleball courts. Up north, I'm used to playing people that are in their 20s and 30s and 40s. And, you know, the the 60-year-old, a lot of times on the weekends, is definitely the rarity. So it takes a little bit of getting used to. So I totally uh, uh, agree with you on that one. Let me see if I can find my place. Second thing I noticed was something that uh, I was told, if you're not making friends, you have to be hiding. I met so many really nice people during my week here, not just met, but enjoyed talking to, exchanging life experiences, et cetera. Yes, I agree with you 100%. When I went belly up to the bar and Bluefin, it took literally, all I had to do is say, I'm here on a lifestyle visit. Next thing I know, I was bought drinks and people were really nice to me, offered to help me out. I, I'm telling you, the rumor is true that you, if you pull off to the side of the golf cart, I was looking at my phone like this. I'd say two people, before two people passed, they stopped and said, hey, are you okay? Um, everything okay? And so it's kind of like it's nice to be in a community like that. It's not BS that people look out for each other, so to speak. Now, that, it's, it's not perfect, and, and nobody thinks you're living in la-la land. It's definitely not. But it's a little different than if I drove a golf cart through Philadelphia right at this point, I'd probably get jacked. <laughs> so that's, that, there's a big difference. Third thing I noticed um, was that people were so relaxed, which I attribute some to the happy hour, which seems to start at 11 a.m. Yeah, sometimes it does start early, and the place closes down at 9 o'clock. Uh, Some of the fact that people like us have grown kids that are all off overhead, many are retired, and most are in early life and the stress is behind us. Well, hopefully it is, and I'm definitely kind of relaxed down here, and it's, it's, I I always kind of joke around that it's not that I have to worry about going to find something to do. It is literally bummed out that I have too much in one day to do, and I, I, I can't seem to do it all. I subscribe, this is talking about me, to, to me. I subscribe to your photography channel, but it seems a little d- bit dated. Um, uh, he asked me to talk about photography clubs really quick. Yes, it is dated because I'll tell you what happened was I had a gallery up north, I, and, and I had just opened it right before COVID hit. And as I was told, it was more of a man cave than anything on Main Street right there in Kennett Square. But I enjoyed it a lot even through COVID. And it was like a second room in my in my house. So that was really nice. So I really didn't pursue it too much. And when I moved down here, I packed up everything. Maybe I'll show you all my printers and stuff like that here now. But um, the photography clubs, I believe there's three main photography clubs and there's also some, like I just joined the Visual Arts Club, the uh, VAA. There's a couple other ones, which was really nice if you're interested in photography. There's a lot of people that are into the photography thing here. And there's a lot of clubs for everything. And a lot of the art ones kind of intertwine with each other. So there's, you know, painters and photographers and stuff all in the same, same groups. And the thing is, is it's not hard to go out and find other people to go do photography with you or share ideas and that type of stuff. So if you're interested in the arts, there are a ton of people here. Um, yeah, the, 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 what have your club experiences been like? I don't know whether you're talking about clubs like bars or anything, but that's I'm not a big, I, I go out to the bars and stuff once in a while, but I'm not a quote clubber, so to speak. But I love the clubs. I, I love, I, I like looking at, and if you kind of poke through these, even like I think one of the last videos I did a couple of videos ago was the train club. Huge, huge. I mean, if you have an interest in that, people come in to do their sales from outside the villages and that type of stuff. So there's a club for just about everything. So anyway, I hope that answered my question. The next one's going to be kind of weird, 
because I, I started out, somebody asked, well, I, I'll just read the question. I got, I got to say, this is one of, the, one of the most different questions I've gotten, although it's not the first time it's been asked, but not quite in this way. And I just felt like I had to answer, and I figured I'd put it at the end, because if you don't want to watch it, I totally get it. But it was really fun for me to do, kind of, because the more I got involved in it, the longer it took. And I probably spent more time on this question than I, than I ever have, because well, let, let me read the question for you first. Hang on. I had to to go back out and get another thing of coffee for this one. My wife and I, uh, Mark, Mark, uh, Mark, right? My wife and I are regular viewers. Well, let me say thank you very much because seriously, when you do subscribe, I can't tell you how much it helps out. And it takes long to do these. I try to do them so they're interesting, but it, it really helps if you subscribe. I really appreciate it. Regular viewers. Um, my wife and I, I'm fried after looking up all the information for this. My wife and I are regular viewers and I have a running list of your occupations over the years. Well, thank you for watching so much that you, that you have that down. We currently have 10. Could you go through your CV to show us what we have missed? I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure what CV is. I, somebody put it down in the notes. I don't know why I'm missing that. I probably should know it. So what I did, I, I went back and I started from the very beginning, the first time I ever got paid for something. Now, I think there's like two things in here I never got paid for, but I had to put them in there because they took so much of my time up and uh, they were uh, an accomplishment, I think. So I'm going to run through these things. I'm going to run through them as quick as I can and still flash a picture up there. I, I'm not sure they have any video for them. I can't remember now. But hang on to your shorts, and here we go. i got to figure out some kind of creative way to get this up on screen. Let's get started on this adventure. All right, here we are. I was about, uh, oh, 11 years old or so, and I'll tell you that I had the, my first job was being a paper boy, just like anybody else. And I also started shoveling snow and mowing lawns. So those things I got paid for. And then my first uh, job that I got paid for was actually working for a aquarium that was built as the largest aquarium in the world. And unfortunately it, it um, burnt down and they rebuilt it, but then they moved back, and I'm not 100% sure what happened to Martin's Aquarium. This was in PA, and that was my first job where I got registered on Social Security, so that was that was pretty cool. Then I started in the audio sound type thing when I was just after high school. I became a stock boy uh, at Wall-to-Wall -wall Sound, and then I moved over and sold stereos at Sam Goody's in Plymouth Meeting Mall. And then I went back and sold stereos at Wall to Wall Sound. And just about the time I was figuring, I didn't go to college right away, so I kind of worked at Pet Boys at a, in the auto parts section. And about that time I decided, you know what, I think I'm gonna go to college. So in college, my first job to help me get through college was I was a door guy or I don't think I was big enough to be a bouncer but I was the guy at the door at Flanagan's pub and then I worked as a bartender at the uh, nightclub that just opened up called the Sunny Spot and then I became a waiter at a place called right after I graduated because I didn't have a job yet so I had to find a way to pay for my apartment and got a job as a waiter at a place called the Cork and Cleaver. The funny thing was is they actually had um, the menu is just like this with the menu right on a cleaver. And I'll never forget my first night. Our big thing was that we had fresh vegetables and then I ended up giving the guy vegetables that were still actually frozen. Then I went into the Air Force and I flew the B-52. And while I was doing that, I had the chance to fly the T-38 and I also flew the T-37 as pilot in command, so I flew both of those. Then I went into the U-2, 
the spy plane, and this is me at my first operational flight opening up a bottle of champagne. This is actually me, a video of the first day that I actually flew the airplane on a checkout. So you have a two week checkout to see whether you can actually fly this airplane before you're accepted into the unit. Nice. Over to one, Roger. Is that a demo 6 one? That's negative. Over 2 2, Roger. Okay. Not bad for a buff guy, huh? So this is me being a little bit of a knucklehead, and I got in trouble because my commander saw this picture, and you're not exactly supposed to be blowing bubbles inside the helmet when you're up at altitude like that. And all this time, I started to trade in the market. So I guess you could call this a paying job because I actually had to pay taxes on it. And after I got out of the Air Force, the kind of the first thing I did was I looked around for a company to buy, and I bought this company that was kind of mom and pop business that manufactured covers that go on hot tubs. Turned that sucker around, got rid of that in about three years, and then I decided that I was going to get creative. And just about that time, now I didn't get paid for this, but it was kind of cool. I got called up by a new professional soccer team in Sacramento, indoor team, and they were looking for a goalie and somebody had told them about me. So I got a tryout with a professional team and ended up breaking my hand. So. Unfortunately, during the tryout, I didn't I didn't get to play. And that was kind of cool. Then I decided I want to get really creative and get into the movie business. So to do this, when you don't know anything about it, I started taking acting lessons, and then I became a PA on set. I got to work on the set of General Ben. I got to know the bear pretty good. Bonkers was the na actual name of the bear, but that was a lot of fun. And I got a chance to do my first horror flick. Now, when you try to get into the business, you do these really low budget horror flicks. And you can probably find this on the internet somewhere, but this is literally a movie that you run around and you make with a little handheld camera on a budget of about $1,000. So this was, this was my first one. And then I got a job working for Fox Sportsnet for a very short period, kind of a short period of time with on a show called 54321 with Wee Man uh, from Jackass and Leanne Tweeden. They were the hosts at the time. And I also did a, I was executive producer and assistant director on a movie with Corbin Burnson. It was called Donna On Demand, which was kind of a revenge love story type thing. And during this time, I also, now this one I didn't get paid for either, but it took a lot of work and a lot of accomplishment. I started racing sailboats and I got into it pretty heavy. And these are a couple of pictures of me racing and my boat. And I actually, my last race, I ended up beating a Olympian. So that was, came in first place and that was kind of cool. I also taught during this time, I taught fly fishing at one of the local colleges, uh, which I, I did get paid for that. And I started to get into storm chasing and photography. This is really the well, picture is kind of like one of you know my first times out or whatever. And some of you may know these the, this, this vehicle right here, but kind of like Twister. And I got hired by a company to be a guide and also to do photography. While I was out and kind of help people with their photography. And as you can see, here's a few pictures, but I also did other pictures. I traveled around the country and it was a great, oh, it was, it was a great adventure, a lot of fun. Got to take some really cool pictures. But I also opened up a gallery in uh, Pennsylvania, up in Kennett Square. And these are just a couple pictures of the gallery. And then I also do, did public speaking around the country, so that um, I got paid for that. And I guess that was, I think that's probably, except for selling prints, probably my last job where I actually got some checks. Whew, that took a little bit of work putting that together. I had to go back in and ah, it was actually kind of fun for me digging back into some old photographs. Sorry about the quality of some of them, but some of them are pretty old. 
I hope you had your pencil out and uh, counted those. I think it's a little more than 10, but uh, definitely a lot of fun, but I'm happy being here in the villages and relaxing, still waiting to get back into my photography a little bit. I'll let you know when I do, but anyway, thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. I hope you had fun on this trip. And like I always say, I will either see you back here in the villages or I'll see you back on YouTube. Thank you so much for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Have a wonderful day.